Welcome to the Colorado School of Mines Spring Commencement. We will be starting the program in five minutes. Please find your seats. Also, please be sure to wear your mask for the duration of the ceremony, even while you are seated. Thank you. Congrats, Ore Diggers. We've done it. We've pushed through all the ups and downs, and here we are at graduation. I can confidently say that leaving this graduation, we're all a more competent, resilient version of ourselves, and that's something to be extremely proud of. Everyone graduating, congratulations. Congrats, class of 2020. Congrats, guys. You made it. To my fellow graduating seniors, you guys are some of the smartest engineers that I know. Now let's go out there and show the world what we can do. Go Ore Diggers. Congratulations, Mines graduates. I want to give a massive thank you to everyone who supported me during my time at Mines and a special thanks to all of the professors at the geology department, all of whom really rock, supported all of our nice work, and really helped us keep our shifts together on our way to this big day. Hello my fellow graduates, a big congratulations to you. You are now among the most elite, an ore digger alumni. May your resilience and brilliance take you far into your future career path. Go class of 2020! Woo! My favorite memory at Mines has to be the cardboard boat race my sophomore year, where in the middle of it, it started snowing. We were all freezing, it was really cold, but it was a lot of fun. Some of my favorite memories have been E-Days, uh, late night study sessions with friends, and an afternoon brew at GCB. Congratulations, class of 2020! I'm really thankful for all the friendships that I've made here in Mines. Um, I know we're all going to be successful in any path that we choose. I want to thank the MEP organization, and especially Andrea Salazar, for being the mom that we needed at Mines. Si se pudo. Thank you to my friends, my family, my grandma, my best friend, my mom, my incredible boyfriend Brandon, and everyone here on the Mines campus that has helped and supported me. Thanks to everyone at Mines for keeping the research environment safe even during the pandemic. Thank you. This is super exciting. I want to thank everyone in my family and everyone who supported me along the way. I also want to thank Mines for making this really difficult year ending in a special way. Congratulations, class of 2020. It has been a tough year for everyone, but we did it. And I know school of my students, especially those graduating, will be good engineers and strong leaders. And I'm proud to be a my graduate. To all my fellow graduates, good luck in wherever life takes you next. Goodbye, minds. Hello, life. This is so exciting. We have worked so hard for this moment. We are going to continue to do great things. Congratulations and good luck. My fellow students, have fun out there. Congrats, class of 2020. Nothing can stop us now. Congrats again to everybody. Uh, go celebrate, you earned it. Congrats, class of 2020, we did it. We may be rambling wrecks, but we're also a hell of an engineer. Uh, now it's the last step is we just take our whiskey clear. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the platform party. The processional is led by Dr. Caroline Coe, Faculty Distinguished Lecturer, and Dr. Andrew Herring, Faculty Senate President. Dr. Coe is carrying the University Mace, a symbol of knowledge and authority dating back to the 13th century. Mines' mace is made of rosewood, brass, bronze, and silver. It weighs 16 pounds and is topped by Blaster, our beloved mascot. Dr. Herring is carrying a replica of the 16th century book, the De Re Metallica, widely considered to be the foundational book on mining and metallurgy. 
This book represents the body of knowledge shared by minds, faculty, and students, and its opening and closing on stage indicate the beginning and closing of today's ceremony. Platform party members include President Paul Johnson and Provost Dr. Rick Holtz, Distinguished Speaker and Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Tom Jordan, Academic Department Heads, Deans, and Vice Presidents, Colorado School of Mines Trustees, Alumna and Trustee, Patty Starzer. Continuing the processional are Mines faculty, followed by our Bachelor's Degrees candidates, along with Master's and PhD candidates from the Class of 2020. The flags on stage represent the home nations of our graduates, including Angola, Australia, Brazil, Canada, Chile, China, Colombia, Eritrea, France, Germany, Ghana, India, Indonesia, Iran, Kazakhstan, Lebanon, Malaysia, Oman, Rwanda, Saudi Arabia, South Korea, Spain, Turkey, Uzbekistan, Venezuela, Vietnam, and the United States of America. Please remain standing until all of our graduating students have entered the stadium.
Please remain standing for a recording of the National Anthem performed by Colorado School of Mines singing group, The Natural Miners. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare almost bursting in air gave gloom through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled A recording of the Mines Alma Mater will now be performed by the Natural Miners. The Alma Mater opens convocation and begins commencement, marking the transition from Mines student to Mines alumni. You can find the Alma Mater's lyrics on page two of your program. Please be seated. And now, please welcome the 17th president of the Colorado School of Mines, Dr. Paul Johnson. All right. Good morning, everyone. And uh, on behalf of Colorado School of Mines, welcome to all of you who's joined us here today, both in Marv K Stadium and remotely. To our graduates, it's great to be able to congratulate you on your accomplishments again, but only this time in person. I know this has been a year in coming for many of you, and uh, we're so glad that you came back. We're so glad you brought your families. And hey, thanks everyone for being here. Let's give you all a big round of applause. <laughs> this, this is our, our fourth ceremony of the past three days, and so um, maybe we'll have it right at this point. but. Uh, you have the opportunity to be the best one, so we hope that works out, out that way. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I, but I think we learned this past year that nothing else really comes close to replacing that emotion, joy, and closure that comes with in-person graduation ceremonies. There really is something magical about walking across a stage in front of your family, friends, the faculty, and staff that really transcends the simple mechanics of it. There is a transformation that takes place and that's why many of us look forward to greeting graduates as they cross stage. To our graduates, each of you followed unique paths to the ceremony, 
Some parts they were shared, some parts they were very specific to you. Our bachelors and some of our master's degree recipients started their mind's journey with the M climb, gathering early one August morning to carry their 10 pound rocks up to the M. So for some of our graduate students, their mind's journey may have started a few days after first arriving in the United States from a different country, or simply when they arrived on campus for the first day of their graduate studies. In your times at Mind, you were all challenged, you grew, and you made lifelong friends. And with those memories in mind, we'd like to start this commencement with a moment of reflection offered up by Molly Wallace. Molly graduated with her bachelor's degree in chemical engineering with a minor in metallurgical and materials engineering in 2020. Please welcome Molly to the stage. Members of administration, faculty, fellow students, family and friends, it is my honor and privilege to offer an invocation for our commencement. As we prepare to celebrate our academic achievements, we are aware that not all of the friends and family who supported and shared in our lives adventures to this point are with us here today. Before I lead in prayer, please join me in offering a moment of silent reflection in their honor. Let us pray. Almighty God, bless the Colorado School of Mines that it may be a lively center for sound learning, new discovery, and the pursuit of wisdom. Grant that those who teach and those that learn may find joy in all their endeavors. We ask for your guidance. For looking past today's celebration, we face a rapidly changing and uncertain world. Whether further studies, the workforce, or the wider world beckon, May we all live fulfilled lives that support others and contribute to this society. We thank you for our friends and family who embarked on this educational journey with us and always believed in us. We thank you for the freedom to pursue learning and life and love. Let us raise our eyes from the mundane and predictable to catch a glimpse of the glorious possibilities of adventure and discovery. Give us humble, thankful hearts for all of the blessings of this life. Sincerely, we ask all of these things. Amen. Thank you. All right, how about a bigger round of applause for Molly for helping us out here. Welcome again, everyone. And to set the stage for this graduation, I'd just like to mention that Mines is a pretty unique university. You probably already know that. Since our founding in 1874 and for the past 147 years, Colorado School of Mines is focused on producing the top scientists and engineers, industry leaders and entrepreneurs, and the knowledge and innovations that the world needs. To do this, our programs have always evolved to match the changing needs of industry and society. You can see that in today's program. It lists what our graduates have studied and researched, covering topics relevant to energy systems, the sustainable use of water, and other natural resources, society's infrastructure of the future, advanced manufacturing materials, economic analyses, information technology, health, and even space exploration. A mind's degree instantly commands respect. It communicates a strong work ethic and perseverance and indicates that you are resilient, a great team player, and that you're ready to tackle anything. Today, we're recognizing bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degree recipients, and they collectively span the full range of degrees offered in the engineering and sciences. In fact, this is the first time, probably in a long time, that we've had a ceremony that actually has all of these degrees together in one place. So, to recognize each of these groups, would our bachelor's degree recipients please stand? Mine's reputation was originally built on the quality and capabilities of our bachelor's degree recipients, and you are exemplars of this. We saw you apply the knowledge you gained at Mines in amazing ways, designing a robot to give a tour of the innovation hub, developing a model to study traumatic brain injuries, and working on assistive technologies to enable quadriplegics and others with limited motor function to participate in skiing and other sports. 
You designed smart clothing for personal health monitoring, came up with more sustainable solutions for the reuse of mine tailings, and uh, one, of, one of our classes from the previous year in their senior design project even converted a 1979 VW bus to electric power. We also saw your successes in competing against other top universities in the awards that you won in national and international project competitions, whether that be IEEE's regional robotics competition, ASCE's concrete canoe competition, NASA's collegiate deep space competition, and the international solar decathlon competition. We look forward to congratulating all of you as you cross the stage a little while today in this ceremony. So thank you for being here. It's okay to sit down. I love mine students. They just like wait for you to tell them what to do. They're, they're, so, they're so polite. Um, and, uh, and by the way, like those little bell things and stuff, it's like totally okay to make, do you want to practice? All right. Excellent. Looks like we didn't get one of our faculty one of them. I, I don't, I don't. No, they didn't give me one either, so sorry. Uh, I was going to rush it out there for you. But anyway, um, okay. So how about our master's degree recipients? Would you please stand? You enrolled at Mines for various reasons, perhaps to get more depth in your major area or to gain new expertise in a second complementary engineering or science discipline. Some of you chose to acquire business management, data analytics, or computing skills, while others were attracted to our new interdisciplinary programs. Some of you also used this opportunity to continue to use your eligibility to participate in internationally ranked NCAA athletic programs. We also look forward to congratulating you soon crossing the stage, and thank you for coming back and being here today as well. And it's okay to sit, too. All right, and finally, where are our doctoral candidates? Please stand. You came to Minds to work with our world-class faculty and explore new frontiers in science and engineering. Through your research efforts, you are now the world's newest leading experts on topics critical to society, industry, and our future prosperity. You have developed new technologies and generated new knowledge that will be put to use to characterize our Earth and to explore other planets, advance our global energy future, build and ensure that the infrastructure we all share and rely on is safe, and utilize, manage, and be better stewards of our planet's resources. And so thank you as well for coming back today, and uh, we look forward to your hooding in a little while. So. No matter what degree you're being recognized for today, you all likely benefited from the support and encouragement of others, and we'd like to take a moment to thank them for their support. Many of them are here today and some are watching on the internet, so um, now's the chance you're going to have a, to, to be able to show them some appreciation. So I'm going to ask various groups of your supporters to stand and uh, let's give them a big round of applause um, for being here. So first of all, would the parents of our graduates please stand? Thank you, moms and dads. Your encouragement and support meant a lot to our graduates. And um, you know that, that you, you helped them along. I'm sure there were lots of phone calls along the way, lots of encouragement that you had to give. Um, and uh, we really appreciate you supporting them, encouraging them to pursue their, their academic uh, degrees here at Mines. And I'd like to give a very special post-Mother's Day thank to all the moms in the audience as well. So thank you. I'm sure we have some spouses and significant others in the audience, so why don't you stand? Yeah. I suppose with a, uh, with a, uh, a graduating class that's a year out in the making, it's possible that some of our graduates might actually be standing up for each other at this point. That does happen. We, we refer to those as power couples. Um, uh, anyway, you also provided support and encouragement and perhaps financial support as well. We, we know that meeting a spouse of a mine student can't be easy, so thank you very much for all that you did to keep these uh, students on their journeys. <laughs> now, 
Next, with the friends, siblings, other relatives, co-workers, and anyone else in the group that we affectionately refer to as the distractions, please stand. I think I know where the softball crew is over there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, even, even though you may be the ones that actually prolonged all of their studies, uh, we thank you for helping them out and keeping them grounded and because uh, that's such a critical success for, for school and for life. And, uh, and finally, uh, the next group, with the exception of those who've accompanied our, our uh, doctoral students and who are here with us today on stage, um, we had space constraints, they, they couldn't all be here, but those are our amazing faculty and staff of Colorado School of Mines. Would you please stand? We've got some looking at, watching and waving. These are the people who deliver on our mission to educate, inspire, and innovate. I like to brag that the Wall Street Journal named them the top faculty across all U.S. public universities for their balanced dedication to both scholarly research and classroom instruction. I know our graduates saw firsthand how they stepped up and went out of their way to offer learning opportunities both in person and remotely to make sure everyone had an opportunity to complete their studies last year and to those of you who graduated in December to, to make it through the fall semester as well. I, I know that was a really heavy lift for the faculty to be able to teach in all those modes at once and um, for all the staff to make the adjustments around on campus and so I just want to give them one extra special round of applause as well for all that hard work they put in this year. We also have some of our Colorado School of Mines Board of Trustees with us here today. They have the, these really cool gray and blue trimmed robes, so would you please stand? All right. The Board of Trustees of Colorado School of Mines is appointed by the Governor of Colorado. It's a very elite group. If you review their backgrounds, you'll find out that they're scientists, engineers, CEOs, business leaders, and entrepreneurs, all who are dedicated to mine success and really believe very strongly in our mission of education and research. Um, and uh, you're going to see them a little later again today because they've got to once again formally approve your degrees. Um, not that we didn't already do it a couple times already, but they're, they're, but they're here specifically to make sure that we do it in person for you. And uh, I want to thank them for being here for that. So in wrapping up the welcome, I, I would like to say that those trustees, along with the Mines faculty, staff, leadership, and alumni, all recognize your significant accomplishment. We are so grateful that you came back today to cross the stage and be recognized. That, that sort of closure and the ability to congratulate you is as important to us probably as it is to you and your families. We are all very proud to call you graduates of Colorado School of Mines. And my request to you is that, and I'm sure you have already started to do this in your, in your lives beyond mines, make sure you share and always carry that pride with you wherever you go in your life and your career. And uh, as you make your mark in the world, I hope that you find some way to help others pursue their education dreams. You are all hell of engineers, hell of a scientist, hell of economists, and ore diggers for life. Congratulations, and I know you're already hell of alumni as well, um, with the exception of a few stragglers who didn't make one of the previous ceremonies this week. But um, in any case, hey, congratulations, and I look forward to seeing you across the stage. And. With that, um, we're going to have our student speaker who's going to be introduced by Dr. Dan Fox, wherever he is. Here's Dan. He, he keeps moving positions on me during the ceremonies. Anyway, uh, those of you who know Dan, he is our uh, vice president for student life. He's also the member of the senior leadership team that we always task with being in charge of weather for graduation ceremonies. And so far this week, he's delivered four different versions of Colorado weather for four different ceremonies. And this actually might be the best of the weather that you've delivered so far, Dan. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Dan Fox to the podium. Thank you, President Johnson, and good morning to all of you. I am honored to introduce our student speaker, 
Naomi Martinez. Naomi graduated with a degree in metallurgical and materials engineering and is from Colorado Springs. Naomi, Naomi was engaged in ore digger activities during her time at Mines. She was part of and served on executive boards for Pi Beta Phi's Women's Fraternity, Panhellenic Council, National Society of Black Engineers, and the Society of Women Engineers, and was involved for three years as a peer mentor, a program that supports incoming students during their first year of college. Naomi's favorite job while at Mines was working at the Book and Brew in the University Library. Since earning her degree in May of 2020, Naomi began working at Materion Corporation as a customer, uh, excuse me, as a customer technical service engineer, and maybe more importantly, she's been spending a lot of time planning her wedding. <laughs> which will take place next week on May 20th. So congratulations, <laughs> Naomi. <laughs> So with that, it's my distinct honor to welcome Naomi to the podium to deliver her student address. Naomi. Um, I think that's fine, actually. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, President Johnson, Dr. Dan Fox, distinguished faculty, and so many families and friends for joining us here today. What a good day to celebrate the hard work of so many MINES graduates. I know it doesn't look like a lot, but. And before I get started, I just wanna say there are a lot of types of graduation speeches. Um, for example, there are like poetic and inspirational ones, and there are also really charming and funny ones. Um, I find it really hard to imagine myself being either one of those things for five minutes. So I've strived to settle somewhere in the middle. May 8, 2020 seems like a really long time ago. Um, when I watched this commencement the first time, I was sitting in my grandma's kitchen watching it on my MacBook Air. Um, I didn't have my cap and gown yet, <laughs> and I was just watching my name roll by on the bottom every few minutes, like you watch the two hour delays after it snows. Um, so yeah, this is really different. <laughs> I am both incredibly honored and humbled to have been chosen to reflect on my four years at Mines alongside my fellow classmates in reflecting, I found myself asking, what does it mean to me to have an education from the Colorado School of Mines? And in all my reflecting, here's what I gathered. For me, first and foremost, a Mines education means acquiring a lot of t-shirts, even when you definitely don't need any more t-shirts. Um, it means going to Celebration of Mines with your sweet mate and going to the CSM Slackers table and grabbing a t-shirt because theirs were the coolest. And, um, promising that you would slack line with them, but I'm pretty sure we all knew that I never would, so no hard feelings. A mind's education means absorbing a lot of information really quickly, um, like when you're searching your group me for the campus map before class again, because you forgot all the abbreviations. Um, and of course it wouldn't be as stressful if you had gotten here a little earlier so you could find a parking spot, gotten burned that way a few times. A mind's education means knowing Marlene at Blasters Brew by name, because I was always really on time to my 8 a.m.s. It means talking to upperclassmen and expecting to hear about drinking or partying, maybe, I don't know, and instead only hearing about the trauma induced by a couple of titration labs. <laughs> so I suppose an education from the Colorado School of Mines means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But I think collectively for us, the class of 2020, it means being incredibly malleable in the face of an actual global pandemic. It means an extra week of spring break at the risk of literally nobody knowing what would happen when we got back. It means some really big sacrifices in the form of senior design and E-days, which I'm still so sad about. So it means we're strong, maybe a little bit anxious, but mostly strong. And that strength means a lot. So I encourage you guys to just wear your mind's gear with pride, put the sticker on your back window, get the special license plates. I mean, the cost of tuition is too high to not brag just a little bit, so you deserve it, honestly. <laughs> and I truly feel like the last year away from mines has allowed me to really come to terms with my pride um, and even realize that I actually kind of like it here. 
almost liked it enough to go to grad school, but not quite. <laughs> and now, if this were a song, this would probably be the bridge where I break things down a little bit for you guys. Um, this would be where I allow things to get serious for just a moment, because I can't be serious for too much longer than that. And I'll tell you a series of things I've had to tell myself a couple of times. No matter how the last term of our education ended up, and no matter how any of the terms of our education ended up, you 100% deserve to be here. You worked hard, and you are deserving. You are a person with a degree from the Colorado School of Mines. At this point, maybe two or three. <laughs> You're still a Mines graduate no matter your grade point average or your level of involvement. You are still a Mines graduate, whether you secured a job a year ago or a month ago or not at all. You are still a Mines graduate if you withdrew from a class or had to retake a class or changed your major to an easier one. You guys made it. I mean, me too, but I'll see you guys. And it's my hope that you don't allow anybody to take from you all that you've done during your time here. There is a whole song dedicated to you being, well, a hell of an engineer, after all. So I wholeheartedly believe that every person here is equipped for success, success which I know which well, <laughs> will be measured differently by every one of us. And as for my pending success, I know I have a lot of people to thank, um, and I can't thank them all in the short time that I have. But just know that I have so much love for my family, friends, my lifelong sisters, and the entire metallurgical and materials department, and also Jimmy John's, just as an establishment as a whole. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, especially to the man who brought my sandwich to Alderson even after I complained about how long it was taking, and he showed up on his bicycle. I felt really bad. Um, he may not have been freaky fast, but he was freaky committed, and I think that we've all related to that at one point. So to wrap it all up, I have a few wise words from who I would consider a pretty wise man. John Mulaney once said, percentage-wise, it is 100% easier not to do something than to do it. And you can check my math there, but I think it holds. And while it still amazes me, folks, I did it, and we all did. Thank you guys so much, and God bless you guys. That was awesome. How about like, you look like you need some, why don't you all stand up and clap? Let's do that. Yeah. I, I was particularly laughing about the part with the t-shirts because um, t-shirts are used very strategically here at Mines. We, we know that some of our students will try to go like a whole semester without ever doing their wash for the first time. So if you keep giving them free t-shirts every week, at least you know they'll have one piece of clean clothing for a while. So anyway, we, we, we like to chuckle about the bunch. Also, if you go to a lot of student meetings to start with, you can pretty much make it through the semester without ever having to buy pizza for yourself as well. So very strategic approach to navigating through minds, I think, for some of our students. Anyway, Naomi, that was fantastic, and thank you again for, for that. Um, I now have the privilege to introduce our keynote speaker, Mr. Tom Jordan. Tom is chair of our Colorado School Mines Board of Trustees. And in addition to being the Mines Trustees Board Chair, in his spare time, uh, his professional job is chairman of the board of Simrex Energy. It's an oil and gas and production company with operations in Texas, New Mexico, and Oklahoma. Early in Tom's career, he held positions at Union Pacific Resources and Superior Oil Company. He joined Key Production Company, Inc. in November 1993 as its chief geophysicist and later rose to vice president for exploration at Key and then executive vice president of exploration for Simrex. He was named president and chief executive officer of Simrex in September 2011 and chairman of the board in August 2012. And as if being board chair for Mines and Simrex isn't enough for him to do, 
Tom also chairs the American Exploration Production Council National Trade Association, and he serves on the boards of the American Petroleum Institute, the Permium Strategic Partnership, Colorado Academy, and something that's very dear to his heart, heart ACE Scholarships, which is a nonprofit organization that raises money and awards financial scholarships to students from low-income families so they can attend the schools of their choice. Sometimes I wonder what it is that made Tom so successful, and you only have to look at his resume sort of to guess, and that's because he's a double alumnus of Colorado School Mines, having earned both his bachelor's and master's degrees in geophysics. So please join me in giving a very warm welcome to Mr. Tom Jordan. Good morning. You know, when, when Paul asked me to speak, I was delighted. And it gave me an opportunity in thinking about what I want to talk about to reflect on my own experience. Like you, I also came back to Mines. I uh, actually got my bachelor's, and then I worked for five years and came back for graduate school. And in thinking about talking to you this morning, I thought, what are the influences on me that Mines had? And, and not just the influences, but when did they trip in my life? Certainly, like you, we all know exactly what Mines has done for us. But my own experience is that as the years wore on, different influences would have different impacts, significant impacts. And I want to talk to you about some of those. I didn't come here today to talk to you about myself. I came here to talk to you about you. You have two things that I want to talk to you about that you took away the day you left mines. And you know they're significant, but I'd like to convince you that they're a larger significance than you may even realize. And then I want to talk to you about two other things that I hope you deeply learn along the way, that I had to learn along the way. Well, the first thing that you took with you from your mind's education is a work ethic. It's legendary. You had to work exceedingly hard to sit where you sit today. You had to learn to put aside pleasure and focus on work when it needed to be done. You had to learn that when there's a thing that needs to be done, you don't even allow yourself the luxury of asking yourself if you want to do it. You just know you need to do it. And that is a skill that will carry you forward through the rest of your lives. You know, in anything that's worth doing, in anything that we throw ourselves at, whether it's education, physical fitness, relationships, business, it ultimately comes down to a very simple choice. It's a choice between progress or comfort. If you want to make progress, you better be prepared to make yourself very uncomfortable in anything you care about, and sometimes deeply uncomfortable, and sometimes periodically miserable. But you want to make progress, and so you're going to hunker down, you're going to do it. And you know that because you've all done it. And if you want to make, if you want comfort, go for it. You know, you're just not going to make progress. The world needs the skill you have, and you will become go-to people. The Mines graduate has a reputation, a well-earned reputation, for being somebody that if there's a critical problem, they can walk to you and say, this has to be done, and know with great confidence that you will do whatever it takes to solve that problem. Nurture that in yourself. Never let it lie fallow. And don't as underestimate the uniqueness of that amongst the landscape of your peers. The second thing that you have in your mind's education, you also know about. But I'd like to convince you that it's of greater significance than you realize. You have very well-honed and deep analytical skills. You, you have been trained in problem solving like no other institution. You know exactly how to attack a problem, no matter how complex, no matter how daunting, and no matter how intimidating. You understand that it's a very rigorous and disciplined process. First thing you do is analyze, have data, have reliable data, objective data, transparent data, 
independent data. The next thing you do is you make observations on that data. And the very last thing you do is you make conclusions from those observations. And you understand fully that that's the way to attack any problem with an open mind, an unbiased perspective, and you never let those three steps get out of order. And you, you know this, that you would never look at data with a conclusion in mind. That kind of confirmation bias is poison in all of your educations. It's a tremendous skill and it will carry you far. But I would like you to be aware of how much society needs that skill. And I would encourage you to adapt it and think about it more broadly than your technical education and your technical pursuits. Our country today is torn apart by really tough problems more difficult than is openly discussed. Problems around climate change, the energy transition, racial and social justice, income inequality, the problem of medical care and how to provide it to a broader population. These are really tough problems. And what do we see when we look around us? We see nothing but what I call opinioneering people that with no underlying appreciation of the complexity of the issues develop an opinion. Just like in your technical discipline, the opinion is the very last thing you form. What's happening in society right now is opinions are the first thing we're forming, very first, with no understanding of the complexity of the problem, and then we just clash with the intellectual rigor of bumper stickers and you have analytical skills that I want to encourage you to apply broadly to how you think about society's problems. Have the same objectivity when you look at these very complex social issues that you, do, that you brought to your education. I, listen to alternative, alternative viewpoints. Listen to things you disagree with. Develop a discipline to listen without judgment and form an opinion last, at very end of your thought process. These skills are desperately needed in society, and as a minds graduate, you have them, and we need them. So don't just leave, don't just apply them in your technical area, broadly apply them in the full richness of your life. You have these two skills today, work ethic, second to none, analytical skills, second to none, and we need them in this world. The third thing I would hope that you will learn along the way, maybe you're really good at it right now, I had to learn along the way, is effective communication. Now, we all, we all think, oh yeah, you know, communication is just, you did something, you find a way to present it, you make a PowerPoint, you show it, check that one off. The difference between incredibly successful people and successful people is their ability to communicate effectively. And it, you know, communication, effective communication, is not just a, I'm gonna show you what I know exercise. It is a connection with your audience. You must learn to have great empathy with your audience and tailor your remarks such that they understand what you're saying. You should understand who you're speaking to and uniquely construct your remarks for that audience. It, it frustrates me frequently when I see really highly educated, brilliant people get in front of lay audiences and talk with technical acronyms, references to technical subjects that they don't know, and it's, it's just a waste of time. You need to learn to tailor your remarks for the audience that you're speaking to. You know, I, when we have people at my company that are presenting to our board of directors, I tell them, pretend you're speaking to two people, our chief technical officer and your grandmother. And I want them both to understand every word you've said. And it's not easy, it takes discipline, and I'm gonna tell you the secret of effective communication. There's a secret to it. Practice, practice. 
You know, it comes with practice. It's that progress versus comfort choice. If you want to become an effective communicator, put yourself in difficult situations where you're forced to do it. Practice, practice with a timer, have empathy for your audience, and take feedback. If you can adopt this skill, it will rocket you forward. You know, in my own company, I say there's three things that are important. The quality of your ideas, your ability to communicate effectively with others, and your ability to take action on quality ideas. The difference between the B and the A in life on this subject is effective communication, and you can adopt it with practice. The last thing and the fourth I hope you learn along the way, and this may sound trite because you're very successful people, but the meaning of success. I had to learn that success is personal. You know, I think so often we define success in, in clumsy terms. We think success somehow is some order of achievement in life and we put everybody on the same measure and, and then, you know, success or not success. And nothing could be further from the truth. And the moment you understand that will be a, a, an epiphany in your careers, as it was in mine. Success is entirely personal. And you need to take the time to define for yourselves what success means. And it's not a one-time exercise. You need to do it continuously because it will change as your life evolves. But everybody has their own measure of success. And you know, personally, I celebrate that because we all get to choose the lives we live and what's important to us. For some people, success is professional achievement. For others, it's academic achievement. For others, it's status, position, and title. For others, it's financial success. For others, it's a rich personal life, spending as much time as they can with their family, leisure pursuits, and their professional lives just facilitate that personal part of their lives. And, and the list goes on and on. There, there are hundreds of choices. And you need to make your choice. And you need to understand that none of the choices are free. Every single choice you make will come with a sacrifice. And you need to own that sacrifice, accept that sacrifice, and adopt your own personal success. And then the other part of success that, quite frankly, I had to learn along the way was never compare your success to another person's success. You know, there's, a, there's a, a poem that got kind of popularized in the hippie era that was written in 1926, and it's called the Desiderata. And there's a line in that poem that says, never compare yourself to others, lest you become vain nor bitter, for there will always be those that are greater or lesser than yourselves. Never compare yourself to others, lest you become vain or bitter, for there will always be those that are greater or lesser than yourselves. And I'll share with you that the moment I understood those words was a changing point in my life and my career. And it can be for you. I encourage you to learn what success means for you, to understand that it's deeply personal, and don't compare it to anybody else's definition. Own it be willing to pay the price, and go on to have very successful lives. Well, those are my four words for you. You have a great work ethic. You have an unbelievable analytical skill set. You will adopt along the way, or you will have the opportunity to adopt great communication skills. And I hope for you that you will all be deeply successful people in a way that's personal to each and every one of you. Well, you go on from mines today, but like, like me, you won't leave mines. You'll take it with you in ways that you'll only come to understand, and it will influence you as the years go on. And it's great to have you back today. I hope you'll continue to come back to mines. And when the time is right, in whatever way is appropriate for you, I hope you'll give back to mines, either through your time, maybe you'll serve on an advisory board, Maybe you'll come back as a recruiter and hire Mines graduates. Perhaps it'll be financial support. But I hope you'll do it not because 
you owe it to minds. I hope you'll do it because you owe it to yourself. And that'll be true success in your lives. Congratulations, uh, class of 2020. It's great to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And uh, now we're here to that very, very, very special part of the ceremony where most of you came back here for, uh, which is to cross the stage. I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, what we're going to do here in a second. Um, first of all, we're going to see our, our doctoral recipients crossing the stage. They'll be followed by our master's degree recipients. And, uh, and then finally, our bachelor's degree recipients. But before we start that, I'd just like to uh, give the audience a chance to warm up their uh, ability to make noise because we expect you to make a lot of noise where our graduates are crossing the stage. Um, so we'll, we'll do a warm up with a few groups here to recognize. Uh, first of all, if, if you're in the stands, why don't we, let's see, we'll, we'll, let's do some warm up noise from the stands here. Okay, all right. I like this guy over here in the teal shirt. Excellent job there. But, but uh, as you've discovered, it is certainly okay to use those feet and stomp on those bleachers. We don't mind at all. If you've got noisemakers and air horns or whatever you want, use them all you want. Please uh, feel free to express uh, all your uh, feelings and uh, joy that go across seeing um, your, your sons and daughters crossing the stage or your friends. So uh, let's see. First group, if you are uh, a bachelor's degree recipient and um, you are graduating today, with some level of academic honors. We'll start with those of you graduating with uh, cum laude honors. Would you please stand? Congratulations. <laughs> if you're graduating or have graduated with uh, magnum cum laude honors, would you please stand? And if you are a member of the Brainiac category, otherwise known as summa cum laude, would you please stand? Um, let's see, what other groups? If you are the first ever in your family uh, to earn a bachelor's degree, would you please stand? And if you are the first ever in your family to receive a graduate degree, would you please stand? <laughs> and finally, if you've been a member of uh, any of our amazing athletic programs in Division II NCAA, would you please stand? That's a good warm up. We're, we're almost ready to get students across the stage here. I will say, as you see um, students crossing the stage, you'll, um, you'll see them wearing various, various things. The first thing we're going to see as students cross the stage are our doctoral degree recipients. They'll be accompanied by their, um, generally accompanied by their dissertation advisor. This is the person who has likely financially supported them through their graduate education, um, through grants. They've mentored them worked with them very hard to turn them into the world's experts on whatever topics it was that they were studying. And as they cross the stage, you're going to see something, um, particularly for bachelor's degree recipients, you don't normally get to see this because our ceremonies are generally separated by um, undergraduate degrees and graduate degrees. But what, what you're going to get to witness is the hooding of our doctoral candidates. So um, once you get a PhD, you get to wear one of these really kind of goofy looking thing that hangs down your back. And um, that goofy looking thing is, is, is the hood that is, uh, means so much to graduate degree recipients, uh, particularly our doctoral students. And uh, what's even more sort of valuable and meaningful for them is uh, being hooded by their, uh, 
by their dissertation advisor. And that's a very, uh, I'll just say sort of a very important thing that um, faculty remember. Uh, they always keep track of all the doctoral students that graduate. And that's a, that's a big point of pride for them. It, it's always fun kind of watching them attempt the hooding because this piece of clothing really has like no obvious top or bottom or inside or outside to it. And, uh, and so they have to sort of navigate that when they get on, this, on the stage. And sometimes if there's a, if there's a height difference, it's particularly amusing. But um, it's, it's a lot of fun. It means a lot to these folks. And um, so it's, a, it's always a pleasure to get to watch and to congratulate them. I will say um, for everybody as you're crossing the stage, we'll talk about the masters before they start and, and the bachelor students as well. Um, for, for students, um, you'll get hooded um, across the stage. You'll get, uh, I'll be here to greet you. Provost Holtz will be here to greet you. Deans, um, department heads will be here. Anybody else, uh, Tom or Patty, anybody else that wants to stand up to join us can as well. Um, when you're crossing to, to this point, the camera's gonna be right here, so it's like smile at the camera, it's your chance. I mean, you came here back like a year later to like get a good photo, let's admit it. That's why you're here. So, um, so let's make sure that photo is great and have that big smile on your face so you don't have to be wearing your masks. Um, we are here to shake your hands, bump your fists, whatever it is that you wanna do and feel comfortable crossing the stage. Um, but the really important thing is, is that camera right there, okay? So, all right. I'm ready. Provost Holtz, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's go for it. And uh, before we, let's see, for first, let's do one more warm up, making a lot of noise, everybody. All right. From Mining Engineering, Dr. M. Stephen Enders, Department Head. Dr. Joseph Bourgeois, presented by Hugh B. Miller. Dr. Wei Hu, presented by Jamal Rastami. <laughs> Dr. Benjamin Teschner, presented by Elizabeth A. Holly. From Civil and Environmental Engineering, Dr. Junko Mankara Mar, Department Head. Dr. Elizabeth Gallo, presented by Terry S. Hogue. Dr. Chelsea Panos, presented by Terry S. Hogue. Dr. Ryan Gilliam, presented by John E. McRae and Terry S. Hogue. <laughs> Dr. Katie Spar, presented by Terry S. Hogue and John E. McRae. Dr. Tamir Eppel, presented by Michael Mooney.
Dr. Hui Lu, presented by Marte S. Gutierrez. From Electrical Engineering, Dr. Peter Owen, Department Head. Dr. Jason Osmus, presented by Pankaj K. Sen. Dr. Yaswant Nagvelaga, presented by Pankaj K. Sen and Anamika Dubey. <laughs> Dr. Ami Ajay Desai, presented by Payam Nayeri. From Geology and Geological Engineering, Dr. Wendy Borson, Department Head. <laughs> Dr. Sebastian Cardona, presented by Leslie J. Wood. Dr. Peng Pei Hall, presented by Leslie J. Wood. <laughs> Dr. Jacqueline Colborn, presented by Stephen A. Sonnenberg. Dr. Mary Forrester, presented by Reed M. Maxwell. From Chemical and Biological Engineering, Dr. Anush Chauhan, Department Head. Dr. Ashutosh Divikar. Presented by Andrew M. Herring. <laughs> Dr. Jolie Lucero, presented by Moises A. Carion. From Mechanical Engineering, Dr. Jason Porter, Department Head. Dr. David Curran, presented by Jason M. Porter. <laughs> Dr. Matthew Zapula. Presented by Brian G. Thomas. <laughs> Dr. Lickett, presented by Christian Chiobanu. From Petroleum Engineering, Dr. Jennifer Miss Gimmons, 
department head. Dr. Daniel Croce, presented by Luis E. Zerpa Acosta. <laughs> Dr. Ji Jun Liu, presented by Ertel Oscon and Luis E. Zerpa Acosta. Dr. Ayush Rastogi, presented by Eileen Fan. <laughs> From physics, Dr. Uwe Greifer, department head. Dr. Justin Anderson, presented by Lincoln D. Carr. How about one big round of applause again for all of our newest doctoral? Okay, the next group up are all of our master's degree recipients, and um, some of you, you'll, you'll notice they, they're also wearing hoods. Um, <laughs> don't ask me what the difference is, but um, other. other other, other than the fact that the doctoral candidates were hooded by uh, someone as they crossed the stage. There is a difference, but you'll have to check after the ceremony. But uh, that's the way to spot them uh, afterwards when they're roaming around the field. So anyway, um, let's do another warm up here for all of our master's students. How about that? Okay. From civil and environmental engineering, Dr. Junko Mankata Mar, department head. Emily Bagnell. <laughs> Catherine Kirstein. <laughs> Lindsay Whittington. <laughs> From Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. Dr. Angus A. Rocket, department head. Michelle Godoy. <laughs> Kayla Molnar. <laughs> Jessica Lewis. <laughs> From Electrical Engineering, Dr. Peter Owen, department head. Chase Schumacher. Katherine Schneider. From Applied Mathematics and Statistics, Dr. Gregory E. Fassauer, department head. Matthew Iverson. From Computer Science, Dr. Tracy K. Camp, department head. Pooja Gangrade. Clara Larson. Tanner Lee. Sushmita Patil. Jose Perez Rodriguez. Erica West. Sean Smith.
from Mechanical Engineering, Dr. Jason Porter, Department Head. Viknesh Balabaskaran. <laughs> Deepak Rajasthakar Karashetti. <laughs> Ram Prasad Rajagopalan. All right, how about another big round of applause for all of our master's degree recipients here today. All right, and rounding us out is the biggest group uh, here today. I think we have almost probably about 150 uh, bachelor's degree recipients. And uh, this is the part where I think Provost Holtz keeps track of mm -hmm. how loud each major is. Yep because he commits to, normally he gives like a 0.2 GPA boost, but I think for students who came back after a year, it's like 0.3 or a whole one? Whole point. A whole point GPA boost, okay. So whichever program is the loudest, he's, he's gonna be telling the registrar tomorrow to fix yep. those, okay, all right, I heard it. <laughs> From Civil and Environmental Engineering, Dr. Junko Mankata Mar, Department Head. Johanna Boyer. <laughs> Alyssa Hodgen. <laughs> Moira Lachlan. <laughs> Julia Sigmund. Annie Strange. <laughs> Tyler Swick. <laughs> Madison Anderson. <laughs> Nicholas Angieri. Nicholas Bino. <laughs> Madeline Cavanis. <laughs> Camille Potts. <laughs> Kara Fragamini. <laughs> Dalen Gray. Olivia Hayden. Banks, Ireland. Neil Isales. Matthew Koba. Taylor Keekley. Matthew Lyons. Adrian Perez. Elizabeth Peters. Mackenzie Turin. Victoria Waters. Jacob Woods. From Metallurgical and Materials Engineering, Dr. Angus A. Rocket, Department Head. Summer Camerlo. Jack Dale. Christopher Kastner. <laughs> Naomi Martinez. <laughs> Nick, 
Daphne Williams. From Electrical Engineering, Dr. Peter Owen, Department Head. Scott Brendan. Brandon Dickerson. Jacqueline Erickson. Andrew Hinkle. Rodney Longshaw. Darrington Randall. <laughs> Thomas Henry Reagan. Connor Ventura. From Geology and Geological Engineering, Dr. Wendy Borson, Department Head. Megan Gay. Jared Tadla. From Chemical and Biological Engineering, Dr. Anuj Chauhan, Department Head. Dylan Baker. Ethan Ball. Bridget Chandler. Harriet Fitzgerald. Alice Hakala. Michelle Kubrin. Ian Randall. Kevin Roth. Brent Janda. Samantha Sherbeck. Madeline Smith. Molly Wallace. Samuel Yeagley. Brittany Middleton. Maya Warner. From Mechanical Engineering, Dr. Jason Porter, Department Head. Riley Alsop. Haley Babcock. Jordan Baker. Riston Baker. Jacob Barson. Kendall Callahan. Vincent Casados. James Casada. Mackenzie Davis. 
James Dinius. Joseph Diebner. Jacob Donahue. Mark Dyke. Madison Elms. Tyler Ferris. Ryan Fredrickson. Dewey Gasvoda. Jessica Horry. Bailey Hall. Nicholas Holowinski. Robert Hobbs. Charles Huffman. Allison Kakis. Joseph Johnson. Nicholas Johnson. Nicholas Novak. Julia Kerr. Owen Kite. Colton Lowry. Nicholas Martinez. Colin McAleese. Rachel McManus. Thomas O'Borney. Nicholas Vivian. Brandon Porath the second. Hunter Rich. Taryn Rizanski. Michael Scheid. Neil Schoenwetter the third. Eric Smorenberg. Anthony Spolino. Colton Spomer. Arthur Stewart. Claire Teklitz. <laughs> Abigail Tysman. <laughs> Alexander Vogel. <laughs> Dominique Vogel. Margo Wheeler. <laughs> Naya Ziegler. <laughs> Lily Clark. Leisha <laughs> Engels. <laughs> Matt.
Megan Hinky. Keely Grovner. From Geophysics, Dr. Paul Sava, Department Head. Arsha Carianto. Emily Morin. Michaela Schaub. From Applied Mathematics and Statistics, Dr. Gregory E. Fassauer, Department Head. Trevor Fujita. Amanda Hansen. Zachary Hart. <laughs> Stephanie Brunello. <laughs> From physics, Dr. Uwe Greifer, department head. Michaela Bradsby. Chance Cardona. Juliana Desiato. Gabriel Iverson. Sarah Jones. Aspen Richards. Rafael Segura Suarez. Ying Yu. Mallory Zabraki. From Computer Science, Dr. Tracy K. Camp, Department Head. Ty Christensen. <laughs> Abigail Dalkey. <laughs> Parker Epps. <laughs> Kirsten Gaspar. <laughs> Alan McDougall. Emma May. <laughs> Madeline McCune. <laughs> Grant Schmadick. <laughs> Garrett Stanford. Tyler Zudens. From Economics and Business, Dr. Scott Hauser, Department Head. Hayden Fitzgerald. All right, um, now we've got a, we go through a speci few special groups here towards the end. Um, and uh, so these, this, this degree recipient who's crossing the stage right now has uh, done something not a lot of people do. Usually we have a few each ceremony. Uh, in this case, we've, we've got one. This is a uh, graduate who's crossing the stage, earned two degrees in his time here at Mines um, in computer science and economics and business, right? Excellent. And so, Please welcome Nicholas Capra across the stage. Nicholas Capra.
right, the next group, we have all these funny hand signals up here on the stage. They try to keep me clued into what's, what's going on. So, you know, dual degrees, I get, the, I get to this thing. When we get to this group, I, 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 get, I get this. Metal. And, and, and uh, what, what, the, what that means is the next group is going to come across the stage are wearing some pretty honking medals. They're pretty awesome. Um, they are, I think they're probably even nicer than mine. When it, when it comes down to it, they're just about as heavy as the rock they carried up to the M. Um, but uh, these students with the medals, in case you're wondering what those medals are for, these were students who were uh, selected to represent their programs as the outstanding graduating senior from their programs. And so uh, when they cross the stage, let's sort of like, let's give an extra special welcome on behalf of everyone in that program uh, as these students cross the stage representing them. Um, they've all been selected by their programs, by the faculty, and um, it's uh, great that they were able to come back and be recognized here on stage for that. So. David Warner. Bradley Jested. Joshua Stackhouse. Now, now this one I got a different hand signal for that we've never actually ever used in the ceremony. Um, it, it started with... Uh, And then, and then it went to like that. So I don't know if we will ever use that hand signal again, but um, I, maybe Dan Fox could help explain that particular hand signal to you uh, before this uh, outstanding graduating senior who has a medal on crosses the stage. So Dan, would you help me? It would be my honor and privilege, President, pr President Johnson, sorry. So <laughs> this last person, uh, I want to take a moment, just uh, first of all, as well, member of our softball team. The softball team has been competing up in Colorado Mesa University in Grand Junction these last several days. So uh, they battled hard, and we were wondering if they were going to be able to come back after the competition. And I, I saw Clara Larson cross the stage with her master's degree, and I think Stephanie Bonello is here as well. Um, who got her degree as well, so congratulations you two as well. But with Sydney here, Sydney has been uh, one of the rarest students that I've had the privilege to work with through the university years that I've been here. And she was the also named the President Senior Scholar Athletic Award winner. So I, I brought all these things because I want them out of my office and we're gonna hand them to Sydney here in a moment. Um, she also was the Summit Award winner for the RMAC, which means for all the players in softball, she was the highest GPA person, so we have an incredible academician as well as an athlete, but just a really wonderful community member and a good citizen. And so uh, with that, we also awarded her the Waltman Award. The Waltman Award is what I would consider the most prestigious student award that can be garnered by a student in their time at Mines. It comes with a plaque made of some sort of um, material that's denser than a dwarf star, and it's very heavy and it's very prestigious and uh, just from the bottom of my heart, Sydney, I wanted to say congratulations on being uh, a, a great representation of the students here and uh, look forward to hearing things that you do moving forward. So as an outstanding graduating senior for chemical engineering, let's give it up for Sydney Marchando. Sydney Marchando. I've never heard a graduate say, I dropped my bubble wrap as she crossed the stage before. So that's a first. 
Uh, anyway, how about a big round of applause for all of our amazing, outstanding graduating students. Wow, look at this, a spontaneous standing ovation for our students, wow. I think this, this ceremony is sending all sorts of new records from, from that to the, this is the first one we've had so many giant heads and photos of graduates out here before. That, that may become, I don't know, that may be a new minds tradition at ceremonies to, to come. It's, it's fun to watch. Thanks everyone for being here. Um, we're almost to the point where we're gonna uh, make your degrees official and wrap up, but we'd like to do a, a welcome from the uh, Alumni Association, which all of you pretty much have been members of for a while, but uh, just to make sure that you know. Um, in any case, uh, minds trustee and alumna, Miss Patty Starzer is going to uh, come do that welcome for us. Um, I should note that, um, well, Patty, you, can, you should probably mention like how many alums you're actually connected to when you get up here, when you give the, when you give the welcome. So I can't think of anybody else who's more qualified to give this welcome than Patty. So please join me and welcome her to the podium. Thank you, President Johnson, and congratulations, graduates. Um, actually, I'm connected to so many alumni now that I've lost count, and I'm just really proud of that fact that um, I've been able to, my husband and I have been able to help and encourage a lot of students, as, along with our two daughters and a son-in-law, um, to become multiple degreed students at mine. So, um, Welcome to the Alumni Association. Um, although it's been about a year for many of you that you are alumni, and in some cases for you multi-degree multi grads, it's been uh, more, than, more than maybe many years. Um, I am honored and delighted to give you a warm in-person welcome to the Colorado School Alumni Association. Um, you have left minds as beneficiaries of a world-class education, uh, an education that's prepared you well for what comes next. Uh, you've graduated from one of the most rigorous engineering and science universities in the world, and I hope you also take great pride and joy in that fact. You are going to meet, as well as, as you probably already have, other alumni from all over the world who know what you're made of. Um, you have that common ground that you've studied here under the M, and you're going out into the world to share the skills and the knowledge, the personal um, experiences with those around the world. And we're so proud of you. I remember fondly last year preparing a video for this event, and I can't tell you how much more grateful I am to see your smiling faces this year, and just um, all the joy that you and your families and loved ones can experience today. So congratulations, graduates, and welcome to the Colorado School of Mines alumni. Thank you, Patty. All right, I think this is where we get to do the thing that's official, because when we did it remotely and recorded, it was only half official, right? Yeah, you guys didn't know that, but it only is really official unless we do it here. So we're going to uh, confer your degrees now, and for that I'm gonna need help with uh, Provost Rick Holtz and uh, our Minds Board of Trustees Chair Tom Jordan. All right, and um, Rick, you've gotta get the, um, Oh, yes. No, really? Yeah. 
We, we've only done like four ceremonies now. It should be there, right? Oh, not there? Uh, let me give Lisa a call. Sorry, folks. Hang with us for a second. We, it, we can't do this without this particular thing with us, so we got to make sure we do it right. Elisa? Yeah, Rick can't find it. I, he looked in the back of the stage. It's not here. Can you think you can take care of it for us real quick? We got it, like a thousand graduates waiting to be conferred. So, all right, thanks. Code blue. We have a code blue. Blaster, you're up. Thank you, Blaster. I think you just saved the day. We've, we would be sitting here for a couple hours if you hadn't found this. So um, this is something that the, you know, the undergraduates don't usually get to see the graduate students being hooded. The graduate students don't usually get to see the conferral with the sacred lightsaber. So um, that's what Blaster has just delivered to us. And generally, uh, we need somebody to help us with this to hold on to it. And um, Blaster, who'd, who would you suggest? Okay, normally it's one, but Blaster says three. Um, at least, yeah, if I'm not reading the paw wrong. Yeah, or hoof, whatever that is. Anyway, um, Blaster says we need the three returning softball players up here. So, Stephanie, Clara, Sydney. Blaster said you had to be here because we've actually talked about you at every of the pre three previous ceremonies, so you owe it to us to do this part. So anyway, we, 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 we figured, I, I don't know, I, I'm going to hand it to Clara because she's like the power hitter of the bunch. So... Um, <laughs> you're, you're in charge. Just don't, like, cut off anybody's appendages with that while we're there, okay? All right, let's see, what else we need? Oh, you need to stand up. Just the graduates. All right, are those, yep, all right, everybody up? Okay, this is the fun part. Provost Holtz, would you like to kick it off? I'm ready. Okay. Oh, okay. 
Oh, not me, right? <laughs> Just them, okay. <clears throat> so, President Johnson, it's a great honor for me, with the approval of the faculty, to recommend the Doctor of Philosophy, Master of Science, Master of Engineering, Professional Masters, and Bachelor of Science degrees be conferred upon these candidates. The candidates who are unable to be present today will be awarded their degrees in absentia. Their names appear in the program. Well, thank you, Provost Holtz, Chairman Jordan, and Chairman, Chairman of Trustee Starzer. Um, I present to the Board of Trustees these candidates. Each has been recommended by the faculty to receive his or her degree, and I confer with the amazing faculty of Colorado School of Mines, and it is my great honor to present these outstanding candidates for your acceptance. President Johnson, by action of the Board of Trustees of the Colorado School of Mines, taken on May 1st, 2020, and December 11th, 2020, I direct you to award these candidates the degrees to which they have earned, and may the force be with them. The, the degrees you conferred in, in May of 2021 are okay too. They're, they're all good. Okay, because otherwise these three are, yeah. they're, they're not gonna get anything. Yeah. So, okay, all right. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. We have to start over now. They were starting to get worried. Okay. And Clara was gonna come after you with a lightsaber. May 7th, 2021. May 7th, 2021. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and say, we'll, we'll make it official. And we'll do it. May 7th, 2021. All right. <laughs> All right, the best part of um, being Colorado School of Mines president is getting to read these, this last very long line, but um, at the end of it, feel free to make a lot of noise in the stands or for yourselves, uh, graduates. So, upon recommendation of the faculty and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon each of you the degree, well, I, actually, I'm not gonna confer each of you all of these degrees, but whatever degree makes sense for you, so you don't all walk away with like six degrees. Um, Doctor of Philosophy, Masters of Science, Masters of Engineering, Professional Masters, Bachelors of Science, uh, with the designated curriculum, with all the rights, privileges, responsibilities pertaining thereto. You can now, if you've got a tassel, move it from the right to the left, and congratulations, graduates. We're going to need you in a minute, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, do you want the, uh, the short or the long wrap-up? Yeah. See, the audience always says short, and the students are always, like, long. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't get it. But anyway, we'll, we'll, the, since all of you in the stands have been so great, I'll go with the short version. Um, one other thing to hand out. Uh, before each commencement, we invite graduates to decorate their mortarboards. And then we have a drone camera that flies around over the ceremony, and it's got this uh, camera built into it that does imaging processing. It's got uh, artificial intelligence algorithm. Um, for the double E's, it does some Fourier transforms. And uh, all of that, for engineers, just like goes into an Excel spreadsheet, because we can't make decisions without Excel spreadsheets, right? <laughs> right? Yep, you all know that. So from that, the Excel spreadsheet popped up a winner for this, and um, actually you'll have to sit down, otherwise we can't see the winner. So, because I always ask the winner to stand up. I, I learned in the first ceremony that if you ask someone to stand up and they're all standing, nobody can actually see that person. So, anyway, Sarah Jones, please stand. And congratulations. And we got some great prizes just delivered to you. All right, okay, we're gonna wrap up here in a second, but I would like to take a moment and thank everyone who helped put this ceremony as well as all the other ceremonies together this week. Um, been a, obviously a lot of behind the scenes work to make all this happen and make it possible for all of you. Um, 
and uh, lots of people volunteered to make this happen. They really wanted to see you and see this ceremony happen. Um, the leader of all this is uh, the one who bothers you with all the emails, Lisa Elson. She's hiding over there underneath that tent over there. There are also lots of other staff here at Mines who, uh, and faculty as well who come out and volunteer and, and you've, you've come across some of them as you cross the stage. Um, we've also had alums who are helping to hand out things over here. Blue Keep helped put together um, a lot of things out here. So one round of applause for everybody who volunteered as well. Okay, for the ending, this is also something that graduate students don't usually get to see. We, we traditionally invite up all of our student athletes to help us wrap this up. Um, they're usually, uh, you can spot them, and I, I can go through the audience and find all of them, because if you've got blue and silver cords, uh, those, are, those are indications of our student athletes. Um, the uh, uh, student athlete representatives about five years ago made a deal with me that if we let them have those cords, they would always close the graduation ceremonies with a fight song, okay? And, uh, and the other way to find them is they've got, many of them have really big rings on their fingers today, uh, celebrating their conference championships and stuff. So with all the student athletes who are here with us today, come on up and maybe stand up here in front of the stage. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about this group. All right. So uh, overall in the class of 2020, we had um, quite a few uh, student athletes graduate. I'm just going to read some of their accomplishments in their time here at Mines. 19 of them are all Americans. Eight of them are academic all Americans. 62 of our graduates from the class of 20, uh, either on a team or in an individual competition, were uh, Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference champions. 60 of them made NCAA tournament appearances, either on a team or in an individual competition. And 10 of them, this might be the largest number ever I think we've seen through, were uh, national champions or on national championship teams. Most people don't think of, when you think of mines, you think of engineers and everything like that. People are always surprised at the athletic powerhouse that is the Mines Athletic Program, and it brings to us amazing students with great qualities, um, as you've already seen here today. Um, and today, we've got 10 of, at least 10, I don't, if I count you up, I don't know if it adds up to 10 or not, but we thought we were gonna have 10. Uh, two of them are all Americans, um, Daphne Williams and Abby Tysman, right? <laughs> Eight of them were RMAC champions. Um, uh, Jacob, Nick, so Jacob in football, uh, Nick in golf, Drew in wrestling, uh, Anthony in wrestling, uh, Jared in football, Abby in volleyball, Daphne in swimming, swimming and Jacob in wrestling. Uh, so let's congratulate them. Four of them appeared in the NCAA uh, tournaments, uh, Ab Abby, Daphne, um, Joseph, and Nick as well. So why don't you raise and wave for all those who did that. And then um, one, of, one of them in, our, in his ceremony is uh, Joseph here, cross country. <laughs> this is our PhD student here <laughs> who's, who, who was on a national cross country team who couldn't figure out he was supposed to be up here with it. Is that, is that, I, 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 we might have to go through that conferral thing again. I don't, I don't know, but um, yes, uh, thank, thank you for being here as well. So let's give them all a big round of applause, please. All right, now the, um, the, the, the county and its uh, wisdom wanting to protect all of us said, in our ceremonies, we were, if we were to do any singing, only two people were allowed to sing. Um, so we're going to do rock, paper, scissors, and you all are going to decide who the two are going to sing. I'm just kidding. 
They were, there, there's, there's two things that really scare mine students. One is crossing the stage. It must have been the hardest thing for many of them. You can tell by the looks in their face. The second thing is being afraid to sing the fight song by themselves in front of everybody because they only really know how to do it as a group. And so um, we've actually got recordings that we made that we're going to draw from. For today's ceremony, uh, rather than do an audience choice, I think since you three are here, um, we're going to do softball. No, you actually don't have to sing it because you recorded it. Do you remember that part? <laughs> so, but we could make you sing it. No, okay, we'll do the recording. Anyway, okay, but we do have a choice. Do you want the fast softball version or the slow softball version? We did, actually, we did the football the other day, which is like the fastest version in the universe. And by the time you get going, it's done. But uh, so anyway, so we're going we're gonna to honor softball with the, the regular speed version. Jen, we got that one? Okay, all right. And what the student athletes are going to do is they're going to help us lead it off with, with like the big O symbol and then um, clapping and getting everybody going, okay? That's, that's your jobs. And Claire, be careful because you could hurt one of your <laughs> teammates there. Um, when that is done, this the, that's the last time to give everybody a great send off. So we're going to make as much, much noise as we can. People in the stands, you know what to do? Okay. All right, Guy, the person in the teal shirt over there, you know what to do? You got it, all right, you got it, okay. People with the big heads and the pictures, you know what to do, right? Okay, awesome, excellent job. And then uh, students, graduates, you all know what to do, right? Okay, um, to signal the end of the ceremony, the... Um, president of the faculty senate has the honor he actually gets to make the decision um, the ceremony officially ends when he closes the day ray metallica and uh, professor andy herring um, i can say this because he's not very good at hearing doesn't have really good hearing so um, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> he thinks i'm saying nice things anyway um, so uh, so uh, he, he's going to be listening out to make sure make, when he closes the book, uh, music is going to start playing, um, and uh, the platform party is going to escape. Normally, we would ask you to stay in place, but since this is the fourth ceremony and the last one of this year, and I don't need them again to spring, you don't have to stay in place. We could lose a couple, and it's probably okay this time. Previous ceremonies, I was a little, little worried about whether or not we get everybody back, but in this one's that. Um, when we're done... Feel free to come down on the, the field, everyone, if you want to take pictures in front of the stage. Feel free to hop up here and do that. Um, I hope you all have a, have a great time and go off and do something and celebrate once again your outstanding uh, achievements. It's been great to see you back here at Mines. Um, it really is an amazing accomplishment. This has been very special to see all of you, and thank you for being here today. And congratulations once again, class of 2020 and 21. Okay, cue that video. Like, like, 